right, lesson 7.5, solving polynomial equations in factored form. Um, we know that a polynomial is in factored form when it's written as a product of factors. So kind of look at standard form, kind of compare and contrast. Here's standard form, here's factored form. So x squared plus 2x in factored form would be x times the quantity x plus 2. So it's like this is the distributor property. And then if you multiplied that, you get your standard form, right? And standard form we know is descending order of the variable. All right. So factored form would be the two polynomials that you would have multiplied together. And their product is the standard form trinomial um, that you get. So when one side of an equation is a polynomial in the factored form and the other side is equal to zero, we could use the zero product property to solve the polynomial equation. The solutions of this equation we could call roots. Okay, so we'll learn more about what all this means as we go. So your key idea, if the product of two real numbers is zero, then at least one of the numbers is zero. We know this to be true. Anything times zero is zero. So if you have um, like, you know, A times B is equal to zero, Either A is zero or B is zero. One of them has to be. So the same would be true if we had, you know, X plus three and X plus two equal to zero. That means either this um, binomial, X plus three equals zero or X plus two equals zero. And we will need to find the solution to both of those cases and we'll call those the roots of you know, the equation. And then we'll use that information. Sometimes we'll have an extraneous solution that won't apply to the situation, but you know, like if you're doing a measurement, a negative solution wouldn't make sense. But let's take a look at some of these examples and work through some of them and see how that goes. So when we see it written like this with the polynomials, we know that either 2x, like here, 2x times this x minus 4. Well, either the 2x is equal to 0 or the x minus 4 is equal to 0 because that's how we would identify the two factors. You just solve for x. So the roots then become x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 4. All right, when they are both binomials, you just simply solve them. We would add 3 to both sides here. We would add 9 to both sides here. The two roots are um, 3 and 9. So let's give this a try. In this situation, we know that either x is equal to 0 or x plus 5 is equal to 0. So if x is equal to 0, it's already solved. If x plus 5 is equal to 0, we solve for x. We would simply subtract the 5 from both sides. So we say the roots are x is equal to 0 and x is equal to negative 5. Okay. Uh, looking at number two, two factors. We have a and we have a minus 12. One of those two has to be equal to zero. So either a is equal to zero or a minus 12 is equal to zero. Then we would add two to both sides and get a is equal to two. So we have the roots a is equal to 0, and A is equal to 2. Okay, these would be the solutions or the roots of this equation. And then uh, finally, we have uh, 5P, right? So this is a factor, and P minus 2 is a factor, two different factors, so either 5 p is equal to 0, or p minus 2 is equal to 0. And so when we divide both sides by 5, we get p is equal to 0 here, right? Because five time, what, what times 5 equals 0? And the only answer is 0. And then we would add 2 to both sides. So we'll get p is equal to 2. Those are our roots. Okay, when two or more roots of an equation are the same, it has repeated roots. 
Here, we're not gonna have repeated roots because they're not the same, but here we can kind of see that pattern that we learned about in the last lesson. And we know that there are two factors that are equal to x minus one. So it's the repeated root scenario. So here you have two binomials, um, either two x plus seven is equal to zero or two x minus seven. Note that on here, when you're solving, you're subtracting seven from both sides, dividing by two. Um, here you're adding seven and dividing by two. So you have negative seven over two and positive seven over two. Here, because these two binomials are exactly the same, right? You're solving and you get the repeated root of x is equal to one. So you really only have to say x is equal, equal to one. You won't be listing two. Um, here, there's three factors. You either have x plus one is equal to zero, x minus three equals zero, or x minus two is equal to zero. In order for the product of all three, to be equal to zero. So the roots then become negative one, three, and two. All right, moving right along. So let's go ahead and solve some of these. So we're gonna have a repeated root because this expands to x minus three, x minus three, repeated factor. Therefore, you know, it's either, so x minus three is equal to zero. And when you add three to both sides, you get x is equal to three. So this is one of those repeated roots. All right, so for number eight, um, why don't you go ahead and solve number eight and let me know what the roots of this equation are. Okay, and I'm gonna move right ahead. So I'm gonna circle that, pause the video to solve number eight. I'm gonna move right along to number nine. Um, here, one of these two factors, so we either have 2t plus 8 equals 0, or 2t minus 8 equal to 0. So we would subtract 8 on both sides, so 2t is equal to negative 8, divide by 2, and then we get t is equal to negative 4. Here, adding 8 to both sides, dividing by 2 gives us t is equal to a positive four. So the two roots are negative four and positive four. Two possibilities that would make, so this negative four here, when you substitute it in, makes this whole first polynomial binomial a zero when that becomes your zero factor. Or if t is equal to four, this one is equal to zero. All right, um, for number 10, we have a repeated factor here. So we have the fact that even though there's three factors, only um, w plus four has to be written once. So either that is equal to zero or w plus one is equal to zero. So w is equal to, and you'll notice that when there's no coefficient, it's really easy to just kind of write this down, negative four, negative one, because you're taking the opposite basically to solve for w. Okay, we haven't seen one like this quite yet, more with three different ones, but um, same thing, either this G, right, or this binomial, or this binomial is equal to zero. So we have G is equal to zero, or six minus, ooh, that's sloppy, three G is equal to zero, or six plus three G is equal to zero. So if we subtract six, here, negative three g is equal to negative six, divide by the negative three, then we get g is equal to a positive two. Um, and then here, we get uh, subtracting six from both sides, three g is equal to six, oops, negative six, sorry. So negative six divided by negative three, g is equal to a negative two. So our roots are going to be g is equal to zero, g is equal to two, and g is equal to negative two. Sometimes they just kind of summarize it and say g can be equal to zero to negative two. Um, I'll leave that notation up to you. Understanding that it's kind of like an and or situation. Um, so then the last one, um, one of these factors has to be equal to zero. So I will let you solve number 12 on your own 
and check your work. Okay, here is the lesson 7.5 vocabulary and concept check. Please identify the um, question you will be responding to and use complete sentences. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. We can discuss them in class tomorrow. Um, have a great night.